we were talking about um, this guy who was in a wheelchair, and his neither were, him or his wife were saved, and but they were both brought up in two different types of churches. He kept on telling her grace, grace, grace. She kept on telling him uh, repentance and judgment, repentance and judgment, hellfire. And so they had this argument, hellfire. And so one day he actually has uh, an experience with the Lord. Like we would say, like he had a revelation, he was actually born again. And he, um, when he has this revelation, he saw how much of a sinner he was. And, and that was his first, you know, the first thing that he realized. And then he saw how huge God, God's grace was. And so he comes home all excited and he's like, he's like, honey, I understand it now. I totally get it. And so he starts telling her all this stuff about how great God's grace is. But she thinks he's just saying the same thing that he was saying before. So she gets really angry and she leaves the house. But he's like, okay, I need to just pray. Like, he's like, arguing is not where this is at. Uh, but it was, the reason why I bring up this story is because it's interesting. All that time that he's arguing with her, he really thinks that he understands grace. And he really, he had all the knowledge, all the Bible scriptures. They both took out their Bibles and they were arguing with each other. And they really thought that they knew what grace was or what judgment was. But it wasn't until he had a revelation of Jesus Amen. and he saw how bad his sin was that he really did understand grace. So he had all the knowledge, but it wasn't until it dropped in his spirit. And I think this happens a lot with us. Like, uh, especially if you're raised in a church or if you start going to church, you get all this knowledge and you think, oh, I have this all figured out. But until you really have a revelation of Jesus, you really don't understand his grace. You really don't understand judgment because you haven't had the full revelation. Yes, get the knowledge, receive the knowledge, receive the scriptures. But just realize that there's a difference when you actually see Jesus for, for who he is. Uh, some people are writing me about grandma, grandma's situation. Okay, so you really can't understand or appreciate forgiveness until you see what you're being forgiven from. That's true. Oh, no, I need to plug in the... Oh, this just gets worse and worse. Uh, the, the thing is dying. Oh, it should be plugged in. Hold on. That could have hooked it. My goodness. It must be a fight again. Sorry, everybody. Don't worry. Is it working yet? Oh my god. Okay, it's, it's yeah, it's about to die. Hold on. Switch gears. Why isn't this working? That doesn't even make sense. I don't know if that plug is not working or. Don't do that one. That one plug everything. Let's take you. Nothing. This is crazy. Let me bring my laptop. Is it the charger? Okay, it's working now. It's the adapter. Do you have one? Yeah, let's pull that one out. Here, I'll put it aside. It's okay. Here. It's not. If I get into that one, I'll plug the other one. Okay. We've got to figure it out. The blood of Jesus. You've got a little radio show with you. Charge it now. Yes, it's finally there. Finally. 
Okay, and we're missing this one. scripture before something else happens. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> All right, so I heard a minister say it this way. You cannot forgive a man until he knows that he is guilty. That is not fully true in the way that, I mean, you have to forgive people in your heart. But what he means is like, if you're a, a parent and you're teaching your children, when your child does something wrong, you can't just forgive them, forgive them, forgive them, because they will not grow. They will not learn something new. They will stay where they are, and they'll keep repeating the same mistake. And so with your child, you make sure you explain to them you did this wrong, and this is why it's wrong, and this is how it hurts people, da, 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 da. Then, when they know they've done something wrong, they can say, I'm sorry. They can repent. They can stop doing that thing. And then you can give forgiveness. But until somebody knows that they've done something wrong, they can't fully receive forgiveness. So the Lord has perfectly arranged the law to show us what it is we do wrong. That's, that's what the law is used for. Our schoolmaster. Don't God. jump ahead. Okay. So, so the law is a necessary part in bringing us. We're not going to the bride. We're not going to the bride yet. Ah, Carol still wants to know. I see. <laughs> See, now you know how it feels. <laughs> so throughout the so the law was necessary part to bring us to grace. Yes. Without the law, you cannot understand grace. You can't come to grace without the law. The law was not the end, it's not the purpose, but it is the means or the pathway. To bring us to the promise. So in, in the Old Testament, we can see two threads. In the Old Testament, we see that the law starts with Moses. But the promise actually begins before that. The promise begins with Abraham. And actually, the promise is even before Abraham. Because in Genesis, in Genesis, the Bible talks about the tree of life. And then the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Pamela, I'm grabbing from our conversation. Pamela and Samuel were studying Genesis. And Pamela was telling me about some of the things they studied. And you remember the verse in, in Genesis where the Lord speaks to Eve. Or no, I'm sorry, to the snake. The Lord speaks to the snake and he says, her seed, talking about Eve, her seed will rise up and it will bruise and crush your head. That was actually the beginning of a promise. Way back when Adam and Eve first sinned, the promise, you can see it in the very first book of the Bible, near the very, very beginning. So the promise goes back that far. So the promise was actually way before the law. When the law came in, it was under Moses. So you see a thread in history where you're reading the Old Testament. We'll put O-T. And when the, when the law comes up with Moses, you can see that it comes into play. But when 
Jesus fulfills it, I'll switch to the thing. Thank you. When Jesus fulfills it at the cross, oh, there's my great artwork again. Jesus fulfills the law at the cross. So it is not necessarily the end of the law, because the law still has a purpose, but, there, but the law is no longer used as a way to become righteous. So this is just the basics here. We're talking about just the basics. This is simple Christianity 101, okay? But underground, underground in the New Testament, let's say this is the ground. Underground, you see this thread also, and it's the promise. The promise was that a Messiah was coming to rebuild connection to have reconciliation with the father because what happened in the garden of eden they broke fellowship with god the fellowship that was created god came in and he walked in the garden you can put it on the stand over here we don't need it until somebody talks uh, they walked in the garden and adam would talk with god and walk with god and so this was the fellowship that they had. And God ordained this fellowship. But when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it broke that fellowship. So the promise came and said, I will restore the relationship that I have with man. But it will have to come through a sacrifice. And so this is where, at Jesus' cross, we see where the promise comes up from the underground. Before, we just talked about, there's a Messiah coming. There's going to be redemption. We're going to be back in fellowship and restored with God. But when, it wasn't until Jesus fulfilled it that the promise comes to the forefront. So both of these things have been present in history. <clears throat> so I want to talk about the two trees in the Garden of Eden. I need my little rings. In the Garden of Eden, we had two trees. Does anybody remember the names of the trees that I just mentioned? The tree of life and the tree of knowledge of evil. Yes, good and evil. So we have the tree of life. We'll put life. Kind of like, looks like a nuclear bomb. <laughs> <laughs> but mom says it looks like a nuclear bomb. Let me try to add some. Now I got it. <laughs> now it has branches, see? That's obviously a tree. What is that, a bird? Yeah. <laughs> It's a flying tree. And then here is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we're going to put knowledge here. K A O. Don't mess me up. Don't mess me up. Okay. That's my wonderful handwriting. So this thing started with a promise. And I got to show you guys my great artwork. Mark, I know you want to see this. Here's. Here's the tree of life. It actually has branches. And then here's the tree of knowledge. Uh, yeah, they kind of look the same, but anyway. So the thing started with a promise, the promise that was given. So there was always a tree of life offered. In the Genesis, this tree was in the garden. It was there. But Adam and Eve never ate from that tree. They never, they never took the fruit from that tree. They never enjoyed it. They never uh, partook of that tree. So was God... I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Um, Audience. Could have eaten from 
from and they didn't. And they kind of just looked or saw both trees. And I don't know. Why did they go untouched for a while? Any ideas? Anyone want to answer? <laughs> okay. Uh, Samuel. Pamela. They can hear. They're in. I hear. Why do you think, what well, you guys, why do you guys think, because I want to include you because we can't see you, uh, why do you think the tree of life and the tree of knowledge was there probably for some time before either one was even? Was God testing them to God see? Trusting them. Say it again. To feel trusting because God is not, what, mm -hmm. not um, dictating? Yes. And then you need to live the life you need that I'm building for you. Yes. Yes. And give you guys the option. Uh, the option to stay to stay here mm -hmm. in this am amazing place, but you can go mm -hmm. and live like a miserable life that we're living right now. That we're living. That we are living in the present. That we're living in the present. So that's the way that we trust God. You know, like we can plan, it's, for example, we can plan our lives, we can um, schedule things, but all goes in God's will. So the tree was there to build confidence between God and, um, and to aid in the need. But that's my point of view. But maybe, maybe they were supposed to eat of the tree because uh, when they were thrown out, it said, uh, let's take them out before they eat a tree of life and live forever. Yeah. So maybe there was a choice there, but why did they make the choice? Why did they wait till Satan tempted them? I'm just wondering if they had an idea. Does anybody anybody have any comments on this? Why they, did God offer both trees? And they didn't do anything with it for a while. Why? Well, I believe that God knew Satan was able to deceive them. Mm. And God not only knew that Satan was able to deceive them, that Satan was acting under the permission of God. Yeah. So I believe the fall of humanity was determined. Somehow God wanted that to happen. That's yes. What I mean. Yes. That's a very but good question. Why didn't they consider the tree of life? The way I see is that. How, how God feels love. Can you guys hear him? No, can you guys hear me? Send me the family? Well, I can hear you, but I cannot listen. Speak a little louder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I speak a little. Okay. Um, the way I see it is that how how God feels love in us, you know? So I'm gonna gonna, gonna take some word that Liz, a little bit Lisa said, and I'm gonna change the word for love you know mm -hmm. every every time in your life every day every second every minute second i know how to say yeah. Yeah. yeah we are surrounded by choices there that are not god you know and that's what make us have uh how do i say uh, mm -hmm. free will yeah so that's what make us have free will yeah. that it, that is what makes us love more God. Because when God was talking to the creation, he was talking like with the, he, he talked with, with the sea, and he, he created the, the fishes and the, 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 animals the, animals, from yeah, the animals from the, the ocean. He talked to the, to the earth, and he created the, everything that was there. And he talked to himself, and he created us. And mm -hmm. He always wanted to have this relationship with us. That's the way I see it. So when you put something that is not from him, is the way God, actually the way I see it, is the way that God show us, like you have other things to, to, to go. But when we stay with me, like when the fishes stay with in the water, it's better for you. Yes. So it's like, um the Lord is letting us know that there's there's a choice. Yeah. So in the garden, they had a choice. 
and uh, that's what I'm hearing from what everybody is saying. It, you, and the Lord wants us to choose him. So I think that that's kind of surmising. I think if they say. had, I think if they had taken of the tree of life first, they yes. would not have taken of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because that life is eternal life, and eternal life is from God. So I think if they chose the tree of life, but they were not responding to to that tree. They were they. Something from the outside had to pull them, and Satan pulled them to the tree of knowledge, whereas God just made it available. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying, it was a testing of their heart, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a testing of their heart, and their heart didn't choose of their own free will. Wow, God put this tree of life. That's representing eternal life. But, wow, this what this snake is saying is pretty interesting. So maybe we should try it out. Yes. And so now the reason, if I might project what you might be saying about the Can needle. I preach your sermon before you <laughs> preach it? Go ahead, Pastor Brenda. I don't know Brenda. what your sermon is, but no, I'm kidding. Uh, when you're talking about the promise that the, that her, she would step on him, her seed would crush his head. Yes. Talking of Jesus going to crush the head of Satan. Yes. Is a return to the tree of life. Yes. To take them back to their first choice. Did I step well, up? Well, now now that we've had a spoiler alert. I'm sorry. No, I'm, just, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Like, she's saying, uh, the Bible doesn't say they took from the, the, the They didn't take from the, from the tree of life. Yeah. yeah it's done they weren't even interested as far yeah, as we yeah. know. Interested. Yeah, and that's, that's like interesting because we always think on the, the tree of the yeah, knowledge. Yeah. And the first thing that we can, can like think of it's like, oh, God just wanted to test them. Like, yes. God just wanted to, like, let something to, like, yeah, drop something, yeah. like a, like something different. Yeah, like to say like, like you have your yeah. choice, like, <laughs> you didn't has, choose me, but yeah, too. yeah, they didn't choose the life. I'm not gonna put myself, so I'm gonna put my, my, my I'm gonna put my hand. <laughs> We're recording. <laughs> let me put it. Carol, you're so beautiful.
Yes. In our lives. So Samuel, and what if, Samuel has something to say. Okay. Let me say this no, for Frank, and then I'll give it to Samuel, of course. Okay. Uh, I think perhaps you're talking about what, what I heard when you were talking about is advertisement, advertisement, mm -hmm. advertisement. You know, you'll see on TV, they'll say, look at this nice ring, and they'll do a close up of it, and it'll be shiny. Oh, I love this ring. You can get it for 50,000 hay eyes. And, uh, and then you get it through the mail and you find out they had it on Shopee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because it's being fed into your, your conscious system by seeing and seeing and seeing. Yes. Perhaps the tree of life was very plain. Perhaps it had nothing flashy. Perhaps it didn't have anything glamorous. Perhaps it was very plain. Maybe it was just very... Like, like, just like a, one of those green leaves there. Rebecca, right here, point to one of those. Okay, hold on. Perhaps it was... Perhaps it didn't help okay. Perhaps it looked just like something like this, okay? Maybe the tree of life was just like this. And maybe the tree of knowledge was like this. So which one looks more amazing? But maybe that was the test of God. Which one are you going to go for, this one or mm -hmm. this one? Maybe it looks something like that. Go ahead, Samuel. I think the point is not the temptation and the tree they were going to choose. I think the tree of life was able to give them better in our life, but God, I think God thought like this, I created you, I give his nature to you, and now I can have a relationship with you, but what I want you to have is purpose, so I will take off the nature you receive, and I'll give you purpose, that you need me, and you will know why you need me, because you will die, and you can spend with me your whole eternity thinking about your human life and how do you need me. And once you took the fruit, you are not able to have the the tree of eternal life anymore because you will live in sin. If I allow you to have this fruit now, you will live in sin. And now I'm giving you a purpose to die and to choose me and to live a life with me and you will spend the whole eternity with this purpose on your heart. That's how I, what I think God did. So it was like, um, I'm trying to understand uh, what you're saying. It's like he, you're looking at the tree of life like it was an offering. No, I believe that the tree of life, when you eat the fruit, you will leave. On yeah. and on and on, and you take another fruit and you will leave. But once they took the fruit of the knowledge, they yes. were not, God could not allow them anymore to have this tree of eternal life because they will spend their whole life in sin. Yes. So let's let's dive into well, that. Maybe, maybe it was, Go ahead. Uh, Go to Dad. It was out of season. It was out of season. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe the fruit wasn't fully grown on that tree yet. <laughs> leave it leave it up to the farmer and the gardener to bring up. A practical point. <laughs> so let's let's go there. Uh, let's start with this. This is the knowledge of good and evil. So I'm just going to put a G. Oh, that's a six. That's not a G. A G <laughs> and E. Good and evil. So I want to ask this question first. Is this bad? Is it bad to have knowledge of good and evil? Anybody have a comment? He said we would become as God. Yeah. yeah. That's it. So, knowledge, good and evil. Is knowledge bad? Is not said. Or bad. Yes. But knowledge, is knowledge bad? No. No. Knowledge is not bad. Is it bad to know good from bad? No. No. 
So why, why did, why did this cut them off? Why after they ate of this tree, were they cut off from fellowship? You're not allowed to answer. <laughs> no, sit down. You always have that one student in the I class. For are training spots. <laughs> so, Fix me, please. please, please. So I want to suggest that this tree is the law. Oh. So the same thing that. Yes. So, so this tree is the law. Everybody. And. And we know that the Bible, oh, did we have a hand raised? No, we know that in the Bible, Paul said, does this mean that the law was bad? No. The law is not bad. It's very righteous. The law actually shows God's heart. It is something very holy. He said, but the law, because I'm weak, <laughs> It killed me. So Adam and Eve chose to eat of the law. They wanted the knowledge. So let me let me read from this a little bit. I want to write something down so I don't forget. <laughs> the teacher has something. So it's not bad to know wrong from right, but there in the garden stood the promise. The, the tree of life inside, inside the garden. garden. Go ahead. No, no, that is a permanent marker. Oh, okay. okay. You are dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. She always chooses the wrong marker. So, yeah, mom doesn't think in those circles. So, at the same time, in the garden, the law presented, and we also have the promise, which is the tree of life. But once Adam and Eve chose to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they were cut off. They were not able to eat of the tree of life. And they could not eat it until Christ fulfilled the sacrifice. He needed to reconcile us to God. But when Jesus came and he became the sacrifice, the way was open for us. That promise that, that somebody would come and make the way, all of a sudden that opened up the way for us to receive eternal life. To eat of the life of Christ. In this way, Paul tells us that if we pursue righteousness by the law, we are automatically excluded from, from the righteousness which is from Jesus. So, you are not allowed to go here. You're not allowed. Are you sure? <laughs> the righteousness that if you choose to eat from the law, you say, okay, I'm going to be independent from God, and I'm going to learn what is right and wrong, and I don't need to have relationship with God. I can have religion. I can make my own decisions. You are choosing to find righteousness through the law. Automatically, you are shut out. You are not allowed to eat of the tree of life. Is there Yes, take it. Sorry to interrupt you, but I need to eat because I'm freaking hungry and I need to do my bag for tomorrow. So sorry, I need to leave now. Okay, love you, Pammy. Brother, 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 come and call me all the time, so I need to be a danger for you. You guys made me for too, so I need to go now, but text me later about the lessons. Okay, love you, Pammy. I love you guys. Bye. Bye. So, but if you eat of the tree of life, it is the same effect. You are automatically separated 
from the law, or finding righteousness through the law. It's kind of, I kind of gets crazy, okay? Righteousness by faith is not, however, something to be taken lightly. Because in many ways, as humans, we automatically try to pursue righteousness through the law. Like a shortcut. We make our own morals. We live by a standard. Why? Why is it that we want a shortcut? Because it doesn't require Jesus. It's just this. What did the snake say to Eve? The snake said to Eve in the garden, you will be like God. In other words, you won't need him. And so the main reason why we try to pursue righteousness with the law is because we don't want that in between. We don't want to have to have Jesus. That's the bottom of it. We want to be independent. Samuel was also reading. He sent a message. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I saw. Okay. Righteousness by faith, however. Okay, yes. Wait, I'm skipping ahead. So it's something that we pursue in ourselves. And we'll see this over and over again in our own Christian walk where we try to pursue righteousness by doing something in ourselves. Okay. <clears throat> but, but not re requiring Christ. Faith sounds so much easier. So why would we choose working over faith? Faith sounds so easy. Like, you just trust Jesus and he'll... He'll take care of everything. He'll teach you righteousness. The Holy Spirit will sanctify you. Why do we choose it? I think it's because of this. Intimacy is easier in one sense. Intimacy with the Lord. But it costs more. Right? Look at an example of if we have, if you have a friend or somebody at work. Somebody at work, you, you guys work together, you have rules together, and you guys follow each other's rules, and it's a simple relationship. You're just like, you take care of the garbage, and I'll take care of cutting hair, you know, if you're working in a salon. And they're simple. It's simple rules. But in order to develop a real deep friendship, that gets complicated. You understand each other's feelings. You're waiting to see what kind of day they had. You want to help them in different areas. It costs you time to be with the Lord. It costs you your own decisions. Because if you want intimacy with the king, you have to let him make the decisions. So I want to ask this question. No, I'll skip the question. Let's go here. Let's go to Colossians 2, 16 and 17. Oh, oh, you, you just can't hold that, can you? Colossians chapter 2, 16 and 17. And whoever gets there first, raise your hand. I knew it. I knew Liz was all over. <laughs> you want to be three? Yes, and I'm going to turn on the audience cam. Oh, my goodness. notice two words shadow substance what do you right, want right, me to right. oh you want me to okay. shadow. so the law now we have it under the category of shadow shadow but the but life is the substance 
What are the words used in Portuguese? Does anybody have the words in Portuguese? Uh, shadow, sombra. Sombra e So, sobra e substância. But let me see if in the Bible how they translate. Okay. I don't think they are the same, same words. Yeah. Okay. And it, in different versions in English, they use different words too. But I do like this version for our lesson tonight. King um, James? This one is ESV. I think. Okay. Uh, substance, they call it. We're talking about something that's really founded and then something that's just kind of imitated. It's a, blur. It's, a blur. it's a blur. It's a shadow of the thing. Go to Hebrews 10, verse 1. I want to open uh, where it is. This. Uh, audience can. Because last Thursday we were talking about the devil supermarket. Uh huh. And yeah. there was the. Uh, Compulsis. Compulsis. Oh, okay. Compulsis. Con the, the desires of the eyes, of the mm -hmm. flesh, and the pride of life. Yes. And in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Genesis 3, like mom was talking about. Uh, so we're pausing on Hebrews just for a second because George brought this up. Okay. Uh, there must have been, like she was saying, the tree of life, one thing is for sure, it was not attractive. The tree of life did not have, you know, glowing gold leaves eat me, eat me. I mean, it seems this way to me because they would be like, oh, have you seen that tree of life? We got to eat from that. You know, it didn't have a lot. So the devil, he uses these things that's already planted in man to, to draw them as an attraction to the law or to the knowledge in themselves. He put, he put a new light where there wasn't yes. before. Yes, yes. And he, he showed, made it show up. He like showed it off. And he used, uses our senses to bring us into that. Now, of course, the pride of life and then the sin, uh, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, these actually lead us into, those are natural desires, natural desires, but they lead us into sin. Because the... That's what the, the devil does to destroy and to kill and to stole. Yes. Since the, the garden of, of Eden. And before the garden of Eden because he did that in the eternity. Yeah. Because he got a third part of the angels. Of, of yes. God. Because there was no need for the man and the woman to eat the, no. the fruit, but the devil created the need for Very them. Yes. Because God gave us everything. God gave us everything and we don't. Uh, so like the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh -huh. It was since the, the Garden of Eden. But the devil created a need. Yes. And since 
that it was created, uh, the heart of the, the woman and the man mm -hmm. departed from God. she began to create what was visualized. Sim. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then she made Rebecca your Ela criou. <laughs> and then she created her own tree. Sim. Ela criou o seu a sua própria árvore, seu próprio céu de mim. And now each person born does what is created in front of them that came from this original idea. E agora cada pessoa que nasce faz a mesma coisa que ela. Yes, exactly. Leva ao pecado, coisas 
bobos, called as bobos. Just like good things, you know, bad bobos. things, everything just go by the actions. Yes. Cause and effect. It's it's so true. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about that when Rebecca was talking about the tree. And I said, well, God wants the people to be content with him. And that way you don't know you don't have to go anywhere else unless his presence. Yes. So because they feel like, oh, I want something more. And this is something that Christians, all of us, yeah. we are inside the church and we said, we want something more. Yes. You know, what something more? You just want the presence of God. You don't need yes. something else. You need just to go and go and look and seek his presence. Yes. And because of that, of course, even um, Eve and, and Adam, they were deceived. Yes. Because they were looking for something more. Yeah. They didn't want to be complete in the presence of the Lord. They didn't want to be content with God. I, I, I have a question. Yes. Rebecca said friendship, not, uh, not only uh, relationship. No. Is that true? With God. God. Deus não, não quer apenas um relacionamento. The Lord doesn't... Ele quer mais intimidade. Eu, ela falou yes. amizade. Sim. Uh -huh. um, Rebecca was talking about friendship. Ela friendship. Ela falou friendship. Friendship. But friendship. friendship. Eu ia falar isso, intimidade. He's saying that you were talking about friendship, right? But, of course, we need is intimacy. Yes. This is something that he's just want to just, you know, say. Yes, the... The, and actually talking, my comparison, my comparison was if you just have someone at work, mm -hmm. someone who works with you, or you have a real friend. Mm -hmm. So a real friend, you have to have intimacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's necessary to have intimacy, but it's more difficult yeah. in some ways, but it's better. And more easy. When we get with God. Yes. With God, you want intimacy. You want friendship. This is what God wants from us. <coughs> so when... When we... When we eat... Of the tree of knowledge, it's independence. Independence. God says this, his law says this, I will do, I will do, I will do, I will do. It's me. I will do it. I will make sure everything is right. But the law, when it's, when it's used properly, you try to do it and you can't. This is, this is natural to man. We, we naturally want to, if we, if we care about doing the right thing, we naturally want to try, try, try. And this is an important part of the process because as we try to fulfill God's law by ourselves, we realize we don't have enough. At this point, you have two choices. One, you, or there's three actually. One, you ignore God's law. I'm just going to live my, my life with sin, whatever I want, by my desires. I will tell my conscience, no, I will shut down my conscience. That's one, one way to deal with it. And everybody has one of these responses, everyone. Either you ignore it and you live the life the way you want. The second, is that you make it a religion. You say, okay, I can't do it, but I can follow these laws. These are my favorite laws. Even in churches we do this. Uh, some churches believe that girls have to wear sleeves to here and long dresses. God bless them, I think we should do it too. <laughs> I think it would be more simple. You think you like a supermarket. Yes, they pick and they yeah. choose. And they say, okay, now I'm holy because I don't wear makeup. And, and maybe this is a good thing not to wear makeup. But that's not the point. That does not make you holy. Yeah. No. That does not make you holy. In other churches, if you 
people, if you feed the poor, just feed the poor, be nice to people, then you are holy. But that's not true. You can do all of these good things and not be holy. So religion replaces that it, it makes you feel better. It makes you feel better. Well, I can't keep all of God's laws. I can't obey everything my conscience says is wrong. So as long as I do most, as long as I can do these things and the majority of things that I'm doing are good, then I'm okay. This is religion. It's the way we say in English to pacify, to pacify yourself. It's like with the baby. The baby wants milk, but you don't have milk yet, so you give them a pacifier. And they, they aren't receiving anything, but they feel better. This is what religion is. Religion just makes us feel better. But we're not growing. I feel so religious. <laughs> <laughs> like a kid in the classroom. Yes. So the third reaction is we break. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit to a verse that shows this. I actually don't have it written here. In, in Romans chapter 6, we see that Paul has a dilemma. And uh, I'm sorry, I think it's chapter 7, chapter 6 and 7. Paul has a dilemma. He says, the law is righteous. And like I said earlier, but I am weak. The law comes in and it killed me. The law came in and it killed me. And so what God does with the law is, well, there are many things that happen with the law. But we will focus on this one area. The law breaks our independence. It makes us realize that righteousness can only be found when we connect with the life. So I'm going to go there, but let's go back to the shadow real quick. Let's go to the shadow. Hebrews 10, verse 1. Verse 1. If you have it, go ahead and read it. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the re realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifice repeated endlessly, year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. So, what Paul is saying here is the law is a shadow. It cannot make you perfect. But he says that the shadow, the shadow uh, lets us know in advance that there's a reality. Let's, I'm going to use an example. Imagine, so we're talking about shadow. The shadow. Yeah, calm, calm down, student. We're talking about the shadow and the substance. We're having parties in our head. <laughs> no more parties. No, I'm playing. You can have those. Those are okay. I've got the word of God. It's okay. You, you, you can have it, but don't say anything. Yeah, but don't, <laughs> no, don't pronounce it. You mean too much. So we're talking about shadow and substance, or shadow and reality. We can say this. Imagine if you're blind. Okay, you're blind. You can't see. And you fall down. Oh, and you have your arm is hurt, but you are walking in the middle of nowhere, and and you say I need to go to a hospital. So you find someone and you say you find an Uber driver in the middle of nowhere. I don't know how this happens, but you find an Uber driver, and you say, is there a hospital around here? He's like, oh, yeah, I think there's like one hospital near here. I can take you. You pay me, I will take you. <laughs> and so, so you're like, okay. You is know. he Colombian? I don't know. 
and sell that song. <laughs> and you still like this. Yes, please give him the card. I don't care. Just give me the money. I will drop you off anywhere. I will take you anywhere. I will take you anywhere. So, so you get in the car. You're blind, remember? And you have you have your arm. You're holding it. So the the Uber driver drops you off, and he says the hospital is in the middle of that field, and he he drops you off at the field, and you're like, well, could you could you help me find the building? And the Uber driver says, I can't, I only have three minutes limit, and I have to pick up my next passenger, so you have to find it by yourself. And then he drives off. That's not a very caring Uber driver, but for we our imagination. We should have gotten out of the car. So now you're in a field, but you have no idea. All you feel is tall grass. You can you're feel blind. rocks. You're blind. You know that the hospital is in this field somewhere. So you're searching like this, <laughs> trying to be careful, and you're very desperate because you're hurting, you're in pain. You know you need a hospital, and you're walking around blindly. And suddenly you break another arm. And then suddenly, <laughs> it just, can't it just gets worse and worse. So, but all of a sudden, it's hot. You're getting sweaty, and you're very desperate. But then you feel a coolness. You feel the shadow. And you know this is a big shadow. So the building is somewhere near. The building is somewhere nearby. So the shadow was, a, was almost like a advertisement or to let you know that the promise was coming. But what if you stayed there in the shadow and you said, oh, I found the hospital. Yes, and you just sit down in the shadow and you're like, I found it, I found it. No, you won't do that because it's the shadow of the reality. The shadow entices you. It pushes you towards finding the reality. So when you, you know now I'm close to the building, you find the building, the reality, and now you can go in the hospital. Okay, so this is not a perfect example, but the law is kind of like this. It's a very good example, and I will use this another, someday I'm gonna use this. So if you, if we, we walk around blind, spiritually, we are blind. The Bible says that we were dead in our transgressions and sin. Our spiritual life was dead. So we're blind and we're looking for the hospital. The shadow of the law lets us know there's something, in, in reality, it lets us know there's something wrong. It alerts us, I need something. And so the law comes in and it kind of presses us towards the reality. So the substance, the reality, is Jesus yes. himself. Amen. The promise is Jesus himself. Yes. So it's not, it's not the revelation of healing. It's not the revelation uh, of doctrine. It's not doctrine. All of these things are important. They're a part of God. But Jesus himself, the person, is the substance. So the shadow is not the point, but it is a necessary part because of our spiritual blindness. Now go to Galatians chapter 3. Start in verse 21. Yes. Yes. Most important. 
Yes. Yes. And and this this is good because it brings us back to the tree of life. And so I will talk more about this also later. Maybe I have to do maybe I have to do like a part a spoiler alert. So maybe I have to do like a part two if mom will allow me because it might be too much for tonight. But we are talking about the life. And that's what this scripture is talking about. Yeah. So, Sorry. no, no, you're, you're allowed to spoil. Everybody's allowed to spoil. This is okay. Because I want us, my, my goal, like tonight, and usually when we talk about the scripture, is for us to explore together. I want us to really think about what the Bible is saying, why it says it, how it applies to us. And so the fact we all give something, it means we are all thinking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. So this is important to me. We're just exploring. The things that I write here are not like, it's just something that I think about when I'm reading the Bible. And so just like you guys, you're in your Bible time and you, you write things. And some of it might not be right. And some of it might be uh, might be right and we talk about it and we explore together because I didn't have time to do like the Greek and the Hebrew and to dig deep so we're all allowed to contribute you know Galatians chapter 3 21 through 26 whoever has it 21 yeah Galatians 3 starting in verse 21 Do you have it, Carol? I have a question. Have after, yes. after all, after. maybe in the lunch time, but okay. I have a question for you and Mom. Okay, perfect. What did you, <coughs> how did you pick who you said the last part? <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you trying to speak Chinese or something like that? I'm the first time here, man. First time I'm here. joking, sorry. Go ahead. I think Christian has I it. Could do Christian! Christian! Galatians 3, Galatians 3, 21. And go to verse uh, 26. I'm sorry, Christian. Is the law then against the promise of God? God forbid. God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily, Righteousness, right, righteousness should have been by the law. So pause there for just a second. Paul is saying, if righteousness could come through a law, the law reflects the justice of God. Yes, it's something holy. Yeah. If, but if that could produce righteousness, we would not need Jesus. Go ahead. I change it to ESV. I think we all are reading this verse. Yes. But the scripture imprisoned everything oh, under sin. Mm -hmm. So that so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Now pause there. Notice the word promise. The by promise faith. given through Jesus Christ by faith. Yes. Go ahead. Now before faith came. We were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under so pause here for a moment. Now, in the King James, I switch. In the King James, it says schoolmaster. Yeah. So the one who's and you can use both because in the story behind this is from a Roman idea. It was like a Greek and Roman idea, where um, where and I don't have the details of the story, but. It's mainly that, and he uses this example later. If you're a son, you're treated the same as, as a servant. 
until the day you're mature. Mm -hmm. The law comes in and it teaches us. It's our schoolmaster that brings us to Christ. It's the guardian that draws us near to Christ. So is the law good? Yes. Yes, the law is a good thing. It's As a matter of fact, in, in Proverbs it says it's wonderful. Yeah. It's desirous. It's pure. David it's righteous. It and, 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 and David said, I delight yeah. in your law. I find it something amazing yeah. because it, it's a part of God. It's pure. It's holy. So, but, but the problem is, is that we in our weakness, we were not able to, to eat of that law. We are not meant to carry the law in ourselves. We were meant to, and jumping ahead a little bit, in the garden, the Lord didn't want Adam and Eve to try to grab knowledge for themselves. He wanted to give them knowledge. Yes. You've probably heard this. Yes. God, in the garden, he organized things where Adam and Eve, you guys know nothing. You're naive. You're ignorant. I want you to receive from me. And all the knowledge you need, Yes. Yes, he gave us that free will. And it ended up where we chose. We chose to be away from God. So go ahead and finish to the end. Verse 23, I think we're on, aren't we? Yeah, right. Checking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, verse 23. But before faith came, we're, we were captive under the law. I think I wrote this. Okay. So, 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us into, into Christ. That we might be justified by faith. I think I wrote this also. Okay. But after that, faith is come. We are no longer oh, yeah. under a schoolmaster. Mm -hmm. For year, for year, are all the children of God by faith in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. For is as many. I yeah. yeah, it was twenty six. Okay, we can stop there. So. So now that, that the promise comes, we can, finally, we can receive righteousness through Jesus. Okay, are you guys ready to continue on just a little bit more? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's go to, let, let me ask this question. Is, so according to this verse, is the law temporary? It's not temporary? No, it's not temporary. But it just said that when we receive from Jesus, it says that the schoolmaster is no longer needed. So is the law temporary? And time, within the concept of time, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like to lead you. To lead you. Yeah, to lead uh -huh. you Once you find it, as long as you don't go back to sin, mm -hmm. you don't need law anymore. But whenever you go back to sin, mm -hmm. you need the law again. To correct you. To correct you. I so in one it. way, it's temporary. In one way, it's not. When you leave camera. time, when you die, audience is temporary. Jesus fulfilled the law. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think that's why Paul the says law. that we will be like changed in everything. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when we like we, when we want this life here, we were more <laughs> <laughs> You got a lot of attention yeah. over here. When we want this life here, which we need to to kind of live under the law, you know, because yes. we have Jesus Christ who took from what well, from us. Mm -hmm. uh, when we want this life and when we need God, we be like we will be able to to live above like above the life. I, I don't know if I should say this because we will be, we'll be, we will be changed, you know? Yes. The, the, and, and you can rest now. 
the in the Bible, and I don't have this verse here. The, the law but is a for the lawbreaker. Right? Yes. Yeah. So this the scripture that Pastor Brenda brought up is that the law is for the one who breaks the law. What what does the law do when we have laws here on earth? Okay. Brazil government makes new laws. What happens with these new laws? Two things happen. Uh, one, it slows down evil. It, it puts some control on it. So the law for us at times, it will help us to, to not get worse. Mm -hmm. Imagine if there were no traffic laws. Especially in Brazil, it would be crazy. It would be madness, and people crazy would die all the time. <laughs> they would get in fights all the time. So the law helps to help us not to get worse. Helps things not to get worse. And then the law, but but does like? Wouldn't it be cool if I worked in the government in Brazil, and every time I passed a law, all of a sudden. Everybody followed that law exactly, but they don't. Like, just passing a law makes everybody perfect. No, you need an enforcer. You know the Brazil very well. Know what? You know the Brazil very well. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, any country. It would be very good if all you had to do, I mean, imagine, all of the Christians would go in government. They would say, all we have to do is pass laws, and everybody will be good. But the law doesn't do this. No. The law keeps us in correction so we don't go too far. But the law also shows us. So Carol, <coughs> she's a crazy driver. Oh, and she's, she's actually a very good driver. But let's say in our story that she's a crazy driver. <laughs> so she's We're driving down the road and she just passes a stop <coughs> sign. She doesn't even notice. In Brazil, you can do this, but you in United Brazil States, well. yes, <laughs> but in United States, you cannot. If it says stop, you, you will get stop. a ticket even if you if do not nobody stop. Nobody around. Yes. You stop. Even okay, if really? there is because no other camera car everywhere in the yes. U.S. Yes. Not like here. You guys don't have. Or police is We do have cameras, but yeah, the yeah. police is like. Police would hide. Let me just scan you. Oh, you just yes. pass the limit. You cannot do the rolling stop. No, they call this a rolling stop exactly. If you come to a stop sign in the U.S. and you just kind of look and you don't fully stop and you keep going, you get a ticket if they catch you. <laughs> Pastor Eldo's daughter got a ticket in the United they States for this. So, so they caught her on camera and they sent her a ticket and she, she wasn't it's like she was just visiting as a stranger. But you can, you have to stop. So. So Carol goes past the stop sign. Maybe a red light is a better example. She goes to a red light and she keeps going. But you do this in Brazil also. <laughs> but anyway, so she keeps going. Then the police pulls you over. And you don't have police pull you over here. This is really hard examples in Brazil. But, but anyway. We figured out because we watch him. Yeah, you guys watch movies you from watch the US. Yeah. So he comes up to Carol and he says, you know, Carol, you broke the law. And she's like, no, I didn't. I haven't done anything wrong. And he's like, well, actually, you did. You did do something wrong. And she's like, I don't see what I did wrong. I was just driving down the road and minding my own business. I wasn't hurting anybody, nothing. And so he takes out his little book. Arguments. Yes, he, justification. Yeah. Her conscience is not awake to know that this was something wrong. Yeah. So the law comes and says, okay, no matter what you think, no matter what you're feeling, the law says you're wrong. Yeah. And so when we come to court here on this earth in government and we have to go to court and there's a judge, the law confirms that something is wrong. That's the purpose of the law. It comes in and it tells Christian, Christian, this is wrong. And then it touches the conscience. Mm -hmm. Because you say, oh. So Carol's like, oh, I see now. And I have, have to a, stop at the red light. We have a saying in the United States, ignorance of the law is, is no, no excuse. excuse. I don't you know if you have You can ever this. say in a courtroom, 
I didn't know. They say that's the yeah, in Brazil also. Yes, we have no. we have this law. We have this state. So this let's statement of principle. Also yes. We have this. I didn't know that. <laughs> you were gonna use it, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm ignorant. It was the first thing I would say. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, these young ones, I tell you. <laughs> so we're going back to the question: Is the law temporary? Now, I found this really cool. This was like <coughs> I was really excited about this. Matthew chapter five, verse eighteen. It's hard to answer because it is. And it isn't. <laughs> Yes, exactly. I gotta close this one. Oh, I'm Matthew sorry. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 18. The law was made for the unrighteous. Yes, for those who break the law. Yeah. Matthew what? 5 18. For truly. You can I turn the camera you. on, George. Sorry. Wait. And go. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. So until everything is accomplished, till everything is fulfilled, it says till heaven and earth passes away. <laughs> the law is here. But watch. Okay, this is where my mind went. Do you guys remember Revelations 21 1? Everybody turn there. Revelations 21 1. We, we talked about this in one of our lessons before. And what does. What does Revelations 21 1 say? And Carol, you can. I'm going to put this closer to you so you can put it on your lap. We can turn to whoever's talking. Whoever gets it, let me know. Then I saw a new heaven. <laughs> <laughs> For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. So, the first heaven and the first earth did what? It passed away. away. It passed away. It disappeared. Yes. But it says here in Matthew that until heaven and earth pass away, the law is going to exist. Yes. Yeah. Because Jesus says, earth and and earth and heaven will pass, but the word never will pass. Oh, don't jump ahead of me. Don't <laughs> jump ahead of me. No, it's okay. I like it. <laughs> okay, so I might be wrong, but by comparing these verses. I'm thinking that the law belongs to time and space. It is a temporary because it is a means for humans to bring us to the understanding of Jesus. But it will stay on earth. Its purpose will always remain as long as heaven and earth are here. Right? And time no more. And then time will be no more. And I think... It will no longer be the law where it's written, but it will be written on our hearts because we are one with the lawgiver. Make sense? Yes. Amen. Okay, let's go to Matthew. What 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 Myra was talking about. By the way, Myra is going to be speaking this Sunday. Woo! So she'll be able to elaborate more, and I'm going to interrupt her sermon and preach it ahead of her. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Matthew 24, verse 35. Twenty-four. Verse thirty-five. Yes. You can read it, Myra. Okay. It says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. <laughs> so I was Almost like a <laughs> yes. Well, um, I'm not say <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave it there. I don't say that about myself, but my friends say that I'm prophetic. So this is I I just thought this was super cool. The law will pass away 
with heaven and earth. But the words of Jesus Hallelujah. will never pass away. The words of Jesus are eternal. The person of Jesus is the eternal thing. Amen. It is the promise. Over here. It is the promise. And the word was God. And the word was God. It was, yeah. it's, it's the substance. Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. So the question is, so his words, and he is eternal. But the question is, how do we, in the garden, we were separated from eternal life. The Lord said they ate of the knowledge of good and evil. So now they cannot, I have to, I have to put a guard around the tree of life. We were separated from the eternal life which was in Jesus. So the question is now, how we want to be righteous. The Bible commands us to be holy. He commands us to be righteous. How do we receive of that righteousness? We said that in the garden, maybe they should have eaten the tree of life. But I heard one minister say, and I'm not sure if it's true, he believes that the tree of life may have looked something like this. Okay, this is a bad example. But he believes that the tree of life, the tree of life, I, I need to show the I like audience. Tree. You like this tree? Yes. Like. You guys, you guys need to see one. how awesome these drawings are. You've never seen an artist like this. Never. Thanks, Mom. I think that's a compliment. Um, but the tree of life may have looked like sacrifice. He said, we need cherubim. With a sword of fire. <laughs> yes, with a sword of fire. So... Yes, yes, it was protecting us from eternal life, yes. from eternal life. And so the tree of life may have looked like sacrifice. You know, I, was, I was doing this stuff like in the beginning of the... Audience cam? Uh, Audience cam? I, I was doing the, the stuff like... In the back of your mind? No, like in the beginning of the... Oh, we were saying, you know, but... I, I do think that the like tree of life is, is Jesus, you know? Because Jesus when he was like here with, with him was, mm -hmm. he said that uh, something about like we need to, I remember this verse in Portuguese, so I will try to translate it again. Okay. But he said something about to trade take me if you want to follow him, you yeah. need to take your cross and follow him. Deny yourself. Deny take your cross. Yeah. And follow me, yeah. And when you do this, you like you throw like you throw off like your knowledge, you throw off like everything that you That's have yours. To yes. To live like with God, and when you choose like live under the law, yes, <laughs> you give up uh, all these things, you know. Yes, you give up the life. Yeah. Of Christ, and I love what Christian said here. When you choose to live in Jesus, you are stripped. We say stripped. Everything is taken away from you that's yours. Remember Paul said, it's not me that lives anymore, but it's Christ in me. But that takes sacrifice. It requires your life. Strip is like where you, if, if somebody takes all your clothes off, or it takes off your, you have a backpack, they strip you of your backpack. They take it away. And you don't have the backpack anymore. This is the word strip. It means like if a, like when you have someone rob you here in Brazil, if you're, if you're walking, I, I had a friend who had this happen. They took his phone, they took his shoes, they took his designer hat, they stripped him. They only left his clothes. Matthew. They only left his clothes, but they stripped him of everything else. When we choose Jesus, we are automatically stripped of our everything that's us. 
We are no longer living our will, our life. And it is something that the devil can like, change or deceive. You know? Yes. Because when you're like under the law, when you're like surrounded by laws, you can say like, you can do this, but like in other way, you know, like yes. you can change the it. loopholes. Yeah, you can change it, you can change that. But when you have like Jesus Christ as your foundation, the as devil, your standard, like he can't like change anything. No. Yeah, yeah it's unmovable. Exactly. Uh, so I want, I want to focus a little bit on how we receive this life, okay? A lifestyle, like uh, mm -hmm. everything we want to do is uh, look to Jesus. Yes. In our face. Yes. Every, From people. Everything Same that's thing. Jesus should shine through us. Yeah. But how is this possible? Uh, how do you do this? I think we try really hard, right? Like this is the way that we've become more like Jesus. We just try. But I have to do it. I have, and you're right. You do have to do it. You have to look like Jesus. Yeah. But it's not possible. No. You will, you know, it's not possible to look like Jesus. Okay, we'll so. Try. So, let me see it. Okay, so I already told you the Bible verse. I will read it myself. It's Galatians 2, 19 through 21. Okay, everybody's excited. They want to open their Bibles. This is a good thing. You can go there. Is the bride in this room? Huh? Is the, bride is the, the bride is not there yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> you feel her pain? Galatians 3. Galatians 2. Start from 19. And I will read it. Okay. Galatians 2, starting in verse 19. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives inside of me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. How do they live? By, By the faith. faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So it's a pleasure to give ourselves. This is the one who loved us. This is the point. This is the point. It is the one who gave his life for us. I do not, keep going, I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Do you? Oh, it's strong. Very strong. Yeah. Do you see the contrast? Yeah. Like the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the law brought death to Adam and Eve. When they chose to get knowledge by themselves, it became death. The, the Lord says to them, now you will die. Now, now you belong to death. And this is what it says here about the law. But in contrast, we have the tree of life. We have to eat of this tree. But it requires time and persistence and fellowship with the Lord. In John 15, how many people know John 15? I don't know the verse because I did not look it up. But John 15, it says that if we want to have fruit... What do we have to do? We need to abide in him. Abide. So in the example of John 15, there's the branch. That's us. We're the branch. And then Jesus is the vine. And he verse says, four. verse 4, you can Remain read. me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And he goes on to say that without me, you can do nothing. Why? If you have if you have a tree with a branch, well, we, we already got rid of our tree here, but we'll, we'll put a branch on this tree. If you have a tree with a branch, 
If I disconnect this branch, if I cut it and I start carrying it with me, and I'm like, look, I have a fruit tree. I have a fruit tree. And maybe there's some fruit, but they die, and slowly the branch dies. And I say, why is there no fruit? Why, does not, why doesn't the branch have fruit anymore? Because it's not connected to the tree. There That's is no right. substance coming from the tree to the branch. There's, there's no, no substance, there's, there's no, no roots, there's, there's no life. life. But, but the, the exciting thing about this is that Jesus came to bring us life and life more abundantly. The contrast of living the law is having the life, the, do you guys have this word in Portuguese? The effervescent, effervescent. Yes, I think it's Jesus. Yes. Yes, effervescent. It's like, it's bubbly, bubbly. The effervescent life of Christ. That's when you're in relationship and you are the branch and you're feeding from the life. Wow, I did that really well. And you're feeding from the life. It's effervescent. It's, it's, it's living. It's alive. I have no other words to use for it. It's intense. Live in the water. Yes, the, the living water, the eternal words. And so this, this requires fellowship with the Lord. In Genesis chapter 3, we see where the devil cuts the fellowship. This is one of the things he says. If you read Genesis 3, I love that our students really want to read the Bible. This is great. Genesis 3, 4, and 5. You guys aren't really students. We're just, we're all students. <laughs> Genesis 3, 4, and 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not Audience. surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat therefore, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So he says, He says, Look, Eve. She, he plants a doubt in Eve's mind. Eve, come on. The, the Lord knows that if you eat this, your eyes will be opened, and, and he doesn't want that for you. Like uh, verse, verse 5, for God doth know that the day you eat thereof, the your eyes, eyes will be opened. Open. This is an interesting, interesting point mm -hmm. because Audience. she gave it, uh, information to Eve. Yes. Yeah, she doesn't know or need to know. She didn't know this before. And and what is he doing? He's putting a question about God's character. Yeah, doubt right there. He put a seed of doubt. Yeah. He puts a seed of doubt. If God for God knows that when you eat this, you won't be, you know, you'll be happy. You'll know everything. And God knows this, and he's trying to keep it from you. What does that do? If I'm if I'm in a church, and Myra's my friend, and Carol's my friend, and, and Carol comes to me, I always use her as the bad guy, let me use Myra. She's so innocent, it's hard to, okay, so Myra will be the bad guy. Myra comes to me and she's like, did you hear? <laughs> and that's not me, okay? Did you hear? She's like, Carol, she always eats all the food at the table before we have the chance to eat. And I'm like, really? And she's like, yeah. And she will, you don't sound like this either, but. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and she, she will lie so she can get the food first. And I'm like, no way. Yeah, she sneaks out during church when we're doing communion, and she eats all the food before everybody comes. Man, that's really bad, huh? <laughs> So what this does is when I receive this information, a part of my fellowship with Carol is broken. Is broken. Because now it's contaminated. it's contaminated. Now, for all of us, it might be true. Maybe Rebecca does go and eat all the food before everybody else does. But when it comes to God, He's righteous. There is no there is no darkness in Him at all. So this doubt breaks the fellowship. So in this moment, Eve disrupts the fellowship with God, 
and she's choosing a fellowship with the snake. So she is fellowshipping with his ideas and his mentalities. So I would so try to speed up here. Him over, over she's choosing the, the fellowship of the devil over the fellowship with God. So what is involved in the promise and what does the Bible say about the promise and how do we keep receiving of the promise? Join us next time live here <laughs> at the small group Bible study because like I told you, there's like a whole lot more and I think right here is where we'll stop. stop. If, if I'm allowed, maybe next week yeah. we can talk about now we know the purpose of the law. We can talk about how we receive the promise. We'll talk more about that. And what the promise means. And so that will be it. Can, I, can I cap it off with, with my little note? And Pastor, Pastor Brenda wants to cap it off with her note. Come on up, Pastor Brenda. Uh, it's all You've that, said that, this. That, is, that is all fair. <laughs> you didn't say anything about the bride. <laughs> and... And the bride will eat of the tree of life. Amen. That's it, Carol. That's it. No, that's no, it. Not. That's not it. That's the second part. Though. <laughs> second okay. part, part two. So when she was teaching this, um, a couple things came to my mind. Um, we, they could have had life, eternal life, which they, they would, would disregard this tree altogether. They, they would not, not want this. If they ate this fish, there would be no need. They automatically would be righteous and holy and have eternal life because eternal life doesn't want evil. Under God, Adam and Eve, like she was saying earlier, you don't know bad because there is no bad. Bad and evil are created once the seed goes in. The lie, the little seed goes in. So if there is no seed, there's no evil. So they didn't get any seed until they went here. They were all here. God says, come over here. So they come over here. Let's eat over here. So they go eat over here. They do everything by the word of God. They don't do anything outside. And so when Adam and Eve sinned, God automatically knows there's no communion. Why is there no communion? They're hiding from God. Before they're like, Wherever God goes, they go. Now they're hiding from God because they're shame. And when you drink from, from this water, you're not going to be. That's right. When you drink of this water, you'll not be thirsty. And like you or him said earlier about, I shall not want, or you, I forgot who talked about that scripture. Uh, you don't want anything once you get this. You don't want it. But now, since we have done this, then we're going to have, this was life. Now we have to die to get life. You have to die to yourself. You have to die to the sin in your life. You have to die to your will, your independence. We are no longer independent of God. If we're going to come back to life, we have to learn to be dependent. And that's why Jesus said, I do nothing. Unless the Father shows me. Yes, even he gives the example of dependence. And we weren't independent till we ate here. If we'd stay here, we we're totally dependent. There's no idea of anything separate. And she would have never had an idea if she had not ate. When she ate it, the seed went in with what he's saying. God's holding back from you. And so from now on, whenever we complain... And I have to tell myself this all the time because I complain in my head about the garbage that you take out or the, or the dirty floor. I complain in my head all the time. Every time we complain, we're being ungrateful and unthankful and unholy. And so we have to die now to get back here to life. We have to die to ourselves because this tree is Cain and Abel. This is Cain and Abel. Abel said, God said, give a sacrificed animal. And Cain said, no, I'm going to give you vegetables because that's the best I can do. My best vegetables. My best is what I can do. So I'll give you what I choose to give you. He immediately chose to be independent from Because the Bible says that, that 
Kane really did give his best. Yeah, he his did. His absolute give his best special, but it was not what God it's asked. What God for. asked for. God didn't ask for his best vegetables. He doesn't ask for our best works. Yeah. He asked for obedience. He has something specific. He says, I don't want your good works. I don't want your best. I want obedience. I want the sacrifice of the Lamb. I want Jesus. I want to see Jesus in you. Yes. And so we have, in order to get back here, we have to die of, of our independence. And we have to be totally dependent upon the Lord once again. 